Hello and welcome to my video. Now if you're a parent and you have a child who has expressed interest in painting with oil paint, I'm hoping that this video will give you a little um, lead on how to go about it to get started. Um, it's not expensive. Uh, you can make a painting out of very few colours and in this one I'm going to be using white, titanium white, sap green, red ochre, light blue, I may add some darker blue later but we'll see how it goes, and a brush. Quite an inexpensive brush, just from a hardware store. Cost a couple of dollars, if that. A bit of oil, this is clarified linseed oil, which is what I'm using at the moment, and paper towel. Now, beware that you may uh, want your child to wear gloves. Obviously, um, you've got to watch out for latex in case your child has uh, a latex intolerance problem. Um, or even just rubber gloves. Some people are allergic to rubber gloves. Uh, I personally don't need anything. I'm allergic to most food. But the one thing I'm not allergic to is oil paint. So maybe I should start eating. Please don't follow that. Don't eat oil paint. OK, that was a joke. So I'm going to show you how to paint something. I'm going to show you how to make it wrong and I'm going to show you how to make it right and I'll tell you a few things about what I used to do when I was very young in school and painting and drawing and that sort of thing. So off we go. And just before I actually get to the painting I just want to show you something. You need something to mix your paint on. Now I'm using this. This is a piece of glass which is on the top of a cabinet I've had specially built which stores paintings underneath. So this is my palette. You can use things like um, a paper plate. Uh, this is a plastic plate which of course you can't get now. I think they've stopped making them. They have certainly in France anyway which is where I am. But you can use uh, a china plate if you want because you can clean a china plate. Um, you can use a paper plate, but um, the problem with those is that the oil that you mix with the paint just soaks into the paper plate. I've tried several uh, versions of this and it always seems to, to, um, to soak in. Or, if you've got lots and lots of money, well, you don't need that much money really, but you can have a wooden palette like this one. And there's something nice about a wooden palette. It, they're just nice to use. They sort of um, they make you feel like a real artist. So I sometimes use those so that I feel like a real artist. Uh, you may want to buy bigger brushes. I'm going to show you what we do with a big brush later on. That's the fun bit. Well, I hope it's all fun, but we'll see. Not everything's fun, is it? OK, so this is how we mix our paint. All I do is um, I start off with two colours. I use sap green and red ochre and it's dead simple. This is this is the really easy bit. It does get easier later on but this is quite easy. So I just put a nice lump of paint. Of course if you're painting on a small uh, board or piece of paper or whatever you're painting on you won't need to use so much paint. I'm using quite a big board and I'll give you the size of that. Some of you, I'm sure, will understand centimetres. Some people don't understand centimetres. So I will give you the measurements on the screen in inches and centimetres. Now you can put the oil in a small container so that you dip your brush in it. That's, uh, that's one way of doing it. It's not my way. What I do is I just tip some oil on the surface. And then the fun really starts. So we get the oil and the paint and we just push them together like this. Okay. It's a bit like um, mud pies without the mud and without the pies. You're making basically a colour that looks sort of muddy. But a lot of landscapes are actually made out of this sort of colour. And you can see as I do that how the colour changes. I hope you can anyway. Let's just make a bigger shape there. So there's a nice bit of dark green. But I can, I can make it light just by pushing the brush through it. And we'll be using this method 
when I actually start painting. So off we go. And I'm going to I'm going to show you what a lot of young people do when they start painting. And I'm going to show you how to turn that into something else. Before I really get started, I just want to say a couple of things. This video is really aimed at um, kids, I call you kids, um, young adults from the age of about, I suppose, anywhere between 10 and 15, 16, that sort of age. Um, and what I want to do is show you how simply you can paint a landscape without worrying about things going wrong. Now, first of all, how many of you, when you were young, have painted something like this? A house with a tree. I'm sure a lot of people have done that. Or you remember that far back. I can barely remember that far back because I'm getting quite old now and I'm sort of it's been a long time. However, in fact, this is a little bit wrong because quite often the tree would look like this. Okay, well now you could say, well, that could make quite a, a charming little semi-abstract painting. Personally, um, I'm assuming that we're all beyond that stage now, and I'm going to show you how to do a proper landscape. Now, um, before I go on, I want to just say something, and that is that you may feel when you start to paint a picture that it's all too difficult, or you may think that you can't draw. Now, um, drawing is something that takes a lot of practice. And I had a lot of practice because I went to a special art school, and all, they, all we did really was draw. There was a lot of painting, but it was based on drawing. And I don't actually believe that that is necessary. What I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm taking away the painting that I put on there. And I'm going to also try and make this stop wobbling. This is something I get every time I paint. I don't know why it is, but um, my easel just doesn't always seem to like to grab the board tight enough. So I'm going to wedge a paintbrush in the back. That's better. Now, you see what happened there? I, I painted those shapes and then I took them off. And what I've ended up with is trees in a fog. I'm not after trees in a fog. What I'm after is a landscape. Now, also, you, it's green. So you're going to think to yourself, hang on a minute, why, what are you going to do with the sky? The sky's got green on it. It doesn't matter. Everything is fixable. If, when you start painting, things don't appear to go as right as you would like them to go straight away, it doesn't matter. What I want you to do is relax. So I'm going to put a line across there now that's a little bit stronger. Now it's sort of reasonably straight, it's going downhill over there, it's going uphill on this side, doesn't matter. You can always fix it with another brush stroke so that it's reasonably what we call horizontal. That's horizontal, I'm sure you know that word. One thing I do know about teaching young people is to talk to them like adults. So if I say things like, I've made that horizontal, you may think, well, yeah, I know that word. Some people don't. Okay, so that's the horizon. That's why it's called horizontal, because it is like the horizon. You may live in some place where there's lots of hills. Okay, well, let's have, let's have a hill here. This is a temporary hill. It's just a, a little quick hill. You notice how I'm using the brush. Okay, I'm just, I'm using it this way. I'm pointing the brush at the ceiling. and I'm using the side of the brush. I can use the tip. But at the moment, I'm just using the side. The reason I use the side is so that when I then pull the brush across, I can take paint away. If I move slowly, it puts paint on. 
Okay, so that step gets you started. You know that you can do lots of things with this brush. And I haven't had to use a pencil, I haven't done any drawing at all. All I'm doing is just making some shapes. So do I want to keep the hill? It's a nice hill, as hills go, but you know, maybe I won't. Maybe what I'll do, and this is another good thing about this way of painting, is that you can do lots of maybes. You can decide that you don't want that to be a hill. You could say, well, I want it to be some trees. Okay, so we're going to do some trees. I'm using the edge of the brush. Okay, so let's have some nice tall trees there. On a bit of a hill and then the land comes down there you see didn't take long and these are sort of the type of you get these trees everywhere they're sort of like fir trees I suppose what else can we do we can paint clouds using green you don't have to use blue you could also use a little bit more brown in the sky and we can say okay we're gonna make the sky nice and dark and brown there's some shapes that will eventually turn into clouds. So there's a bunch of clouds. And I know that if you are of a certain age, you'll be looking at this and you'll be thinking, what's that old fool doing? He doesn't know how to paint clouds because he's not painting white clouds on a blue background. Again, you see, this doesn't matter. What we're doing is having fun. So it's a bit like it's a bit like um, making a mess and then finding something in the mess. So if I do this now, to make it all soft, I can turn that into some dark clouds. And as I'm doing it, I can also change my mind about the landscape. So I can sort of say, well, I really didn't like those trees. I'm going to lose the trees and I'm just going to have a flat landscape see how many chances you get to change things now if you're doing this in watercolor or water paint um, you you won't have the uh, you won't have all these chances because um, once the water has soaked into the paper that's it really you're, you're stuck with it so if you make a mistake it's not so easy to fix so what I'm doing this is as I said oil paint so oil paint is very flexible Let's have some light along the horizon there. So as you can see here, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I'm using paper. Now, as I, as I paint, what I want to do, I'll tell you about when I went to school. Now, first of all, when I went to uh, normal school, which was in England, because I'm English, um, painting lessons were very, um, they were quite strict. You had to do this and you had to do that uh, exactly as the teacher told you and if I'm honest with you that didn't really help people to actually enjoy painting because it's like you're you're painting the way the teacher wants you to paint now I don't want you to paint like this I don't want you to paint this landscape what I want you to do is to realize how easy it is to get something started and also to realize that color in a painting you don't have to have a blue sky white clouds green grass brown trunks green trees most trees are slightly green obviously but um, they can be all colors depending on the tree and before I go any further I'll just explain another thing about this style of painting this is tonalism. Now, what you're seeing here are a mixture of tones. So tonalism uses tones. This is why you don't need to draw much, if, if indeed uh, at all. Because what you're doing is you're using the, the tones of different things to make the shapes. So there is a some nice dark clouds. They won't stay this dark. I'll, I'll lighten them up a little bit, but um, as we go along. Anyway, back to my school days. Yes, so when I left school, which was about a thousand years ago, um, I went to art school. 
and in art school they taught us art and there was not a lot of input from the teachers some of them were good some were bad what you want I think from a teacher in my opinion is suggestions you don't want the teacher to tell you exactly what to do the good teachers would just say perhaps if you did this or perhaps if you did that and that would um, encourage people much more than a teacher that demands you do a certain thing so uh, I was lucky I had some very good teachers but I also had a few that um, I was not happy with what should we do now how about some trees and some fields this is the sort of stuff I usually do because this is where where I live looks a bit like this what I want to do also is make this bit here look further away than what happens down here it's called perspective I'm sure you know that word so what I have to do is get some something happening through there that gives the illusion that things are going away from you several ways of doing that and I'll get on to that in a second let me just tell you a few things about oil paint the good thing about oil paint is that you don't need turpentine um, if you are on the younger end of the age range that I mentioned maybe your parents or guardian or whatever might not want you using turpentine because it does smell and I understand that and it's horrible stuff anyway so um, I don't use it because I, I, I really don't like the stuff it, uh, as I said it stinks and um, I don't want it to stink you know I don't, uh, where I live is stink free uh, the other thing uh, let's have a little bit of tree there while I'm thinking about it Notice how easy it is to just get these shapes on a landscape. That's why I'm keeping it simple like this, because you don't, you don't want to have to worry about drawing at the moment. Um, so I, what I do is I wipe the brush on a piece of paper, just get most of the colour off, and then I, I could use this uh, to put the blue on, believe it or not. It looks pretty green, dark. But uh, if I wipe it enough, I can put blue on there and white, and um, it'll look fine. I'll, I'll be doing that a little later on. Um, if you drop paint on a carpet, first thing, why are you painting over a carpet? Okay, put something on the floor, put, uh, put a tarpaulin down or something, or some plastic sheeting so that you don't drop paint on the floor. However, if you do, all you need is detergent. That will get oil paint out. Do not put turpentine on a carpet where you've dropped paint because it will just make the paint spread further into the carpet. And then I think that is the road to a lot more trouble from whoever owns that particular carpet what else should we do let's have a little think I think I need to first of all show you how to get people to come into the landscape you want people to look at it but you want people to stay in your picture how do we get them to stay in the picture well first of all we've got this we've got this sort of um, sort of lump of trees here okay and below them there's a field and that's just by a quick quick movement of the brush like so I'm going to make that even more big I'm going to embiggen it and make the top shape a little bit more interesting notice I'm keeping the brush pointing at the ceiling and I'm just sort of using little movements like that to give the illusion of trees there we go so we have a slope coming down here and what I'm going to do now is something along the bottom just to get you to follow the shapes into the picture so I'm going to pull this dark line along here and then back again and right down to the bottom like so you see now it's not a path it's just a shape in the landscape that will, will and I will describe the shape I will make this here look as though it comes around and down and then up again here I hope it doesn't always work usually it does so maybe it will be something like a path by the time I finish so notice side of the brush always always the side okay the tip is just for certain things um, 
like. Supposing I said, well, I want, to, I want some more trees here. Okay, so then I'll use the tip of the brush. So I'll just sort of push them in like this. Like so. And there we have another little block of trees down there. This is the very beginning of the painting, obviously, so things are going to change as we work through. But uh, I hope this is getting your, getting your interest and also showing you that there's, there's no real mystery about painting. You have, to, you have to just sort of try and, how can I put it, try going out and looking at some fields, take a photograph or two if you want. Not everybody works from photographs, I don't. These are all from in my head somewhere. And take, put the photograph on your computer screen and then look at it occasionally. Don't try and copy it exactly, just get the feeling of the landscape. This could be snow, you see. I haven't painted snow, but this white could be a little bit of snow. Hmm, possibly. Not in this painting, though. So anyway, going back to when I was much younger, a thousand years ago, uh, you have to realise that when I went to school, there were no computers. Get your head around that one. We did, even the idea wasn't around. Um, in fact, when I went to my first school, we didn't even use paper. We used to use little um, little pieces of, s I, I'm Welsh, I came from Wales. We used to use little pieces of slate, which is kind of stone, and chalk. And we used to write on these chalk, uh, these slate uh, pieces, like a, like a roof tile, a bit like a roof tile. And then, so at the end of the lesson, you could just wipe it off and start again, similar to what I'm doing here. Make a mistake, wipe it off, start again. Um, so, yes, uh, no computers, no, no YouTube. How we managed without YouTube, I have no idea, but uh, there you go. So there, look, I'm putting in a few little tree shapes, just really simple shapes. And all they are are just dark blobs. Don't try to paint trees, just paint shapes that could be trees. And I'm using the brush really gently here to get this effect back and forth. No, no problem with that. Absolutely as easy as it gets. Let's have a little bit of tree there on the corner. See now, these shapes lead you around. You have to find ways to trick the viewer to go into the picture to go where you want him or her or them to go. And um, what else should we do? Let's, um, I think we'll just put a bit more tone down the bottom. It may get really dark down there, but uh, at the moment I'll just keep it a sort of, you know, slightly green tone. Just as a reminder, I know you don't need reminding because you can see what I'm doing, but I haven't touched a pencil once. So if you feel that you can't paint because you can't draw, just forget that idea, because you don't need to draw anything. You can paint. You could actually do a, a portrait of someone without doing any drawing. There. So we have this, what, what I would call a neutral tone. In other words, this colour here is quite flat, and it's quite, uh, quite quiet and subdued. It's not um, loud at all. This is loud, this is loud, and that's loud. And you've missed that. That's a fingerprint because I touched the board. But it doesn't matter. You make a mistake, you take it off. So there is the mistake, right there. You probably can't see it. I'll try and zoom in later, but if you do make a mistake like that, and you just touch it, just put a bit of paint on it, and it'll go away. So we've got some dark skies over a landscape here. Where was I with my ancient story? Yes, okay, so I, I believe that most people can be taught to do anything, except me, no problem with painting. Some people say, why don't you sing? Well, I can't sing. Doesn't matter how much I believe I could sing, I've tried, and when I sing, cats and dogs 
in the neighbourhood howl. The cats scream and the dogs howl because they want me to stop. So uh, I'm not a good singer. But, and also I'm not a very good, I'd, I'd love to be able to play the piano, but um, I remember when I was very young, we did have a piano in the house and we also had cats. And to be honest, when the cats walked up and down the piano keys, it sounded a lot better than anything I could ever do. So I don't play the piano. And another theory that I have is that to be able to do something, and I'm assuming that because you're here, you're interested in oil painting, you have to have an interest and I think my interest in playing the piano wasn't big enough. So, but when I was young, probably the age you are, if you're in your early teens, uh, I, was, I was really interested and very, very obsessed with oil painting. And I'll put on the screen my, my first oil painting, which was a, it's a very bad Polaroid um, photograph of a pigeon. I wanted to paint wildlife, and uh, I painted a few birds. Um, but then I got more interested in landscape. So there's a big lack of bird paintings in my life, but lots of landscapes. The other thing you might want to ask yourself is, why do I want to paint? Do I want to paint just because I, I like the idea of being able to paint? Or is it because you want to make a career in painting? Maybe you want to be a full-time professional artist, which is what I am. And it's, I have to say, if you do, it's a delightful way to make a living. Because you can sell your paintings. You could maybe paint pictures. They don't have to be like this, obviously. Um, and you could do illustrations for magazines, which is something else that I've done, which again is quite fun. Uh, but what this will teach you, I hope, if you do decide that you want to be an illustrator, is that start your picture flexible. This is flexible. This painting could go in any direction. It could, um, it could be anything. I mean, at the moment it's a landscape, that's pretty obvious. But if I decide to uh, just wipe it all off, which I'm not going to do, if I decide just to wipe it back and then start again, it could be quite interesting because you'll always see this landscape just showing through just a little bit and it can give you a nice misty effect. So let's just, uh, I'm not going to worry about the tops of these trees because I'm going to be doing something with the sky there in a moment. Uh, so they will be probably be destroyed. Uh, and then reassembled. So, uh, one thing I can guarantee is that if you are getting interested in painting, you've probably done a few pictures and thought, oh, that's just too difficult. Well, I, I hope that by looking at this, you'll realise actually it's not that difficult. The difficult thing is believing you can do it. Going back to the piano there, <laughs> uh, I might have contradicted myself there a little bit because it didn't matter how much I believed I could play the piano. I really couldn't. It would have been nice, but there you go. Not everything is for me. And, uh, now, let's see, what should we do? We've got this area here, which is quite big. It's a big, a big area of nothing much happening. So I think I should probably get something in there, a little bit of texture. So I think I'm going to put a, a line of trees below that, like so. You see, now I'm not thinking to myself, I'm going to paint a tree. What I'm thinking, I hope this makes sense, is I'm, I'm just putting down something that could be a tree. Don't worry about the bottom part of the trees because they will change. Be 
because I've done this line of trees here at the top and I've got the field below them I can put these over the top so that I don't have to paint field in between the trees so what do we think yeah I think the perspective is working okay I'm just going to add a few dark shapes down here just to strengthen this uh, this line which could be a bit of raised ground you know you've got the field here then it comes up a little bit and then along and then up up the hill so there we are we've got some shapes there a little bit of texture another another little mistake in the sky there which I'm sure you might be able to see just a few marks where I've accidentally touched the painting so let's just lose that that's gone all these little stripy marks across here, um, they automatically look like fields. Because obviously if you look at a field, if you look at a field from the top, it looks like a patch. When you look at it from the side, it turns into something flat. So as you fly over a field, it becomes this shape. As you go down closer to the field in the distance, they become long and thin. So let's see what we can do in there. I'm going to just put a few few dots in there just to show the effect of some distant trees just touching the brush just to make a few spots I'll show you a close-up of this when I've finished so that you can see what I'm talking about now here the line, the shading between this this shape and this, to me is a little bit too um, too contrasty. So yeah, if you're interested in painting like this, you don't need a lot of money to get started. You just need a few tubes of paint. And so far, the only colours I've used on this are two colours. And that's brown and green. So I haven't had to use a lot of colours and I haven't had to spend a lot of money on paint. And I think down here, I think maybe I'll just for an experiment, I'll just put a few shapes like that just to see how it goes. It's like a, a little bit of experimentation, just a, a few little shapes there which I hope will lead you up into the picture. Good. Now, a little bit of sky. As I said, the top part of these trees here, at the moment, it's a very hard shape and it looks like something with a pimple on it there and more pimples. So I'm going to put a little bit of blue in the sky and a little bit of white and this is quite a magical effect this is the white that I use it's titanium white and um, I'm not going to use a brush I'm going to do some of this with my hand and maybe a little bit with a palette knife so here's a here's a quick effect for you so over there in the distance Right next to this tree here, you've got uh, a bit of light in the sky. So that comes from there, and it goes across there. Like so. See, just putting a little bit of white on your painting can have quite a, a, an effect. So we'll just put that along there. Simple as it comes. That's a mistake, but as I said, with oil paint, mistakes can just disappear. Now, as I said early on, you might want to wear gloves. I have a lot of um, food allergies. Uh, almost everything I eat now, anything that contains milk and certain nuts and soy and stuff like that, gives me a really bad reaction. But the only thing, one of the things, not the only thing, one of the things I'm not allergic to oil paint but you may be some people are some people can't take this 
on their hands. So always be careful of that. There we are, just a little bit of light in the sky. I'll be that sort of making the sky much more interesting in a minute. So what should we use next? I think um, I've got I've got this uh, royal blue. Now this is a pale blue. This is the one I showed you at the beginning. Um, and I think what I might do. I, I like stormy paintings, by the way. I find that stormy paintings are just much more interesting to me. Not everybody, but to me. So um, I may be using some of that light blue, but I think also I'm going to use some darkish blue. This is called ultramarine. And um, you, oh, and you don't have to buy tubes this big. I mean, I do a lot of painting, so it's worth me buying big tubes, but. Um, you can get uh, smaller tubes and start on a smaller scale. This is, as I said, it's quite a, a large painting if you're starting. So yeah, you may be considering a lifetime in art. Who knows? I uh, remember when I left school, I was asked by the careers officer, what do you want to do, Army, Air Force or Navy? And I, I said um, art, and his reply to that was, "Well, you'll never, you'll never make a living doing that." Um, so anyway, I didn't listen, and I carried on. So I made a living. I've always been an artist um, all my life, and uh, I became art director of several magazines, some really quite nice international magazines as well as uh, national and um, I also worked in uh, television very briefly I did a little bit of work for the Muppet Show years ago which was really good fun and I also designed some um, what we used to call visuals or storyboards for advertisements, the sort of thing that you would see in the cinema or on television, that sort of stuff, where you just draw lots of little blocks with um, quick sketches in them to show show the cameraman what, uh, what the next shot could look like. That was good fun. And as I said, back in the days uh, before computers, so every, everything was done by hand. Uh, you didn't have any help, you didn't have Google, didn't have Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or anything like that. So here, quick sky. And when I say quick, I mean quick. When you paint a sky like this, it doesn't have to be a perfect blue. Uh, you can just sort of scrub the paint on, as I'm doing here, make some shapes. I think we'll put a little bit in there as well because why not? Let's just see how interesting it becomes. Make your painting fun. Have have, a, have as much fun as possible. When you start to um, paint a picture and you think, oh, I've got to be really serious now. I've got a cloud to paint. How am I going to do this cloud? I've got to be so careful. Well, you know, clouds aren't careful. Clouds just sort of jump about all over the place doing what they like. So that's what that's what I try to do with my brush. This is what I do. I, I have these strange images in my mind, you see. I have this is my brush, this is my sky. I'll do what I want. I don't care what anyone else wants. I'll do it until I find the interest that I'm after. And only then can I be forcibly dragged away from my painting for people to look at it. There we go. There's some sort of bluey stuff. I decided at the beginning of this um, video that I wouldn't get technical, so I'm going to keep it all very, really simple. This is bluey stuff, this is browny, greeny stuff, and this is vegetable. So let's now start doing this to it. One thing that you possibly need to try to do when you paint is to give up this idea of you know clouds have to be white skies have to be blue trees have to be you know green just 
plain old green. Imagine if this was just like green. I mean, the greenest green you could imagine. Um, it would just not work. It would not be interesting. So when you paint, enjoy it. Look at look at some paintings by uh, the old masters. I always say this in my videos. Look at the paintings of John Constable. Because even if you may be a young, modern, up-and-coming artist, there's a lot to be learned from the skies of John Constable and William Turner. Just to mention a few. Also, look at Dutch paintings. I absolutely love Dutch landscapes and Dutch seascapes. If I can find the picture, I'll put in a copy of a Dutch seascape that I painted years and years ago, because I'm nearly 70 now, I'm 69. Let's not, let's not rush ahead, I'm 69, not 70. Uh, when I painted well over 30 years ago of a, a Dutch seascape with ships, which was a very big painting. It was, um, well, as high as this room, which was just over six feet. Um, it's probably, actually, no, it's probably about seven feet, this room, um, by nine feet wide. And it took me a long time to paint, it took about a year. But it was uh, an experience I'll never forget. And that was, I painted that because people wanted uh, professional fake paintings. So it was painted to look like the original. I can't remember the artist's name now, um, but it was Dutch. Okay, so there's a, a sort of um, slightly Turner, Turner type sky. If you look up Turner, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oh, another bit of technical equipment that I use quite often is uh, a thing which is called the, the, the shirt. This is an old shirt. Excellent for wiping your hands on. Right, that's enough of the techie stuff. So I'm just going to do something back on the area over here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to just take off the bottom edge of some of these trees so that they look as though they're sitting on the ground rather than floating above it. Okay, so I've got a line that goes through the tree there. Doesn't matter. Well, that's one of the things I, I say often. It doesn't matter because, quite frankly, it doesn't. Um, I'm going to, again, just using my finger. The only reason I'm using my finger is just for speed. I probably would use a brush uh, normally, but I just want to put some sky, either uh, light, I beg your pardon, either side of this. lump of trees. That brings it forward from the back a little bit more. I don't want the white to follow the tree. That's wrong. There are some things that um, in painting that are just wrong. Some people say, oh, everything you do is okay. Well, that, that, okay, let's get real. Um, I'm sure that if you're of a, a, you know, if you're a teenager, you'd like to be spoken to like an adult. I remember when I was young, I always liked that idea. So let's try that. Um, when I um, I live in France, and a few years back, I had to uh, find one of my teachers on the internet from when I was actually 16 years old. So you can imagine, it's going back a bit. It's not just going back before computers. It's going back almost when they invented the wheel. Um, that's what it feels like sometimes. And uh, there we are. So that's a mess now. I want it. It looks tidy, I suppose, but I, it's basically a mess. You'll have to trust me with that. So I've got, I've got this light coming in here. I've got it coming over these trees, but not following them. Never follow, as I said. Anyway, I managed to contact this uh, art teacher I had at school, and, his, and he doesn't use the internet as far as I know, so I, I'll give you his name. It was um, Dave Saunders, who's a very good artist, um, and he was very inspiring. And 
when I was talking to him, he said that things in school have changed a lot since, uh, since when I was there, because he would come up to me if I was working and he'd say, give me, the, give me a pencil or give me a brush a minute, and he'd show me how to change something. Now, apparently, later on, and I'm sure that now it's uh, this way in teaching, the teachers aren't allowed to touch any artwork done by a, a child or student because it might offend them. Okay. Now, I personally, I would rather be offended. Not that it ever offended me. I just don't quite understand where that comes from. But I would welcome the fact that he's telling me how to put something right. Uh, if he doesn't, if the teacher doesn't want to um, actually show you, because that's one of the way I see it is showing. It's not taking over. It's just show that they're there to teach. So that's what I tend to do with students that come here. I've only had one quite young person to teach, a girl who came here with her father, and um, she was really good. She knew what she was doing. She picked it up very, very fast. But uh, I thought, well, I better check as I'm going through the lesson. I said, do, do you mind if I change your painting a little bit? Because I can show you. It's much easier for me to show you what I'm talking about than it is for me to try and let you guess. And she was more than happy with that, so she wasn't the slightest bit offended. So um, I don't know what it's like now. Maybe it's the same. But uh, yeah, I would rather know. But I think if you're teaching, you have to do it with a certain respect. You've got to not, um, not be big-headed about it. You just have to instruct but you have to instruct in a way that doesn't upset anyone. In other words, no showing off. Okay, so I'm making this bunch of trees, I hope, a little bit more interesting on the top. It seems to be looking okay in the camera, but uh, we shall see. So, I don't know how long I've been painting now, but I want to keep this one reasonably brief, because a lot of my videos do go on forever. Anyway, um, so, where was I? Yeah, back in the old days. It's all, when you get to a certain age, you know, it's all back in the old days because there are lots of them. Now, let me think, what else can I do? I'm going to do a little bit more work on the sky. I may leave most of the landscape as it is. These little bits of white here could be water that's just sitting on the land. Could be, I don't know, maybe water, maybe um, chalk, something like that. I quite like this one more than I like this one. So as I'm looking at a painting, I'm cons my eye is basically going everywhere. And I look at the shapes and I think, what do I need? What do I need to keep? What do I need to get rid of? This is something that you can do when you start painting. Look at your picture. If you're, if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where you can just look out the window and see trees, that's always very useful. Uh, if not, there's always some um, Google Earth. Go on to Google Earth, find a bit of landscape that you like, come down to ground level and literally drive along the road and see what you can see. You may find something that interests you. And there's your reference. That's all you need sometimes just to give your, give your mind's eye a little bit of a boost just so that you know what things look like. So there we are. Now, before I go though, I'm going to zoom in on this bit here because these are my main trees. This is where I want this is where I want the eye to go. I want them to come in and across and look at these trees. But also when you get to those trees, I want you to have something else to look at. When I've done that, um, maybe I'll do the sky no sky first or that big decision. Biggest decision I've had to make all day, other than getting out of bed. I'm gonna I'm just going to put a few little bumps there, just on the edge. OK, I like that. Good. Now then, a little bit of cloud. I didn't show you this at the beginning, but I'll show you now, because it's never too late. This is a palette knife. You don't have to use a palette knife. You could use a brush, but I just happen to like palette knives. Um, what I'm going to do is some... Um, just put a few bits of white on the board. 
and you may think, ooh, the old fool has completely ruined it. Well, I have to say, that does sort of happen, but I've got a good feeling about today. Let's, uh, let's stay positive. Let's just put a few bits of white on the sky. So, this is how I do my skies normally. So again, I, I, I know this is obvious, and you are <laughs> of a certain age where you know what's obvious and what isn't obvious. Um, these are just bits of white. They're not, they're not clouds yet. There's nothing, well, I suppose they're slightly cloudy, but uh, it's not like, um, not obvious cloud shapes. And I haven't had to draw a cloud. All I'm doing is just putting a bit of paint on. Okay. And I have to point out, this landscape is all from my mind. I don't have a picture to look at other than what is in my head. So, uh, tell you something about when I was young. I used to go out, and I would sit in the garden, and I would just look at the sky. This is from about the age of about nine, I suppose. I was fascinated by skies. I thought, wow, they're pretty cool things. And, um, <laughs> it's sort of stretched into my later life because I've done a lot of a lot of air travel and uh, I always insist on a seat next to the window on an aeroplane so that I can just look out because clouds from the top are actually quite interesting as well as from underneath. A bit like a dog going for a ride in a car. If, if I could open the window my tongue would be flapping out the window. Okay, so there's a little bit of white in the sky there. Now I have this brush. This is one of my delicate little sky brushes. It's actually, um, believe it or not, it's clean. It's got a little bit of staining on it, but that's all. But the paint that's on there doesn't come off. All I'm going to do with that is just a few quick wipes like this. I hope this is um, showing you that uh, you can do this because you have to remember this, um, this hand here, this doesn't have any special weird talent in it. It all comes from up there in my head. Um, how you move a brush on a painting is all from your brain. It's nothing to do with having artistic hands. I mean, you can practice, yes, but how much do you have to practice just to do that? It's like painting a wall, really. So all I'm doing is stroking the brush very lightly over the landscape, just to soften everything just a little bit. So there we are. I've seen skies like this. If you haven't yet, then you will. As you get older, you'll come across skies that are just absolutely incredible in your lifetime. Amazing things. They're, they're sort of, um, they're nature's little bits of abstract. I'm going to just pull something down there. Just a, bit. just a little touch in there, just to make it fun. The thing about painting, one of the things, there are many, one of the things about painting is that it needs to be fun. You're making a you're making a picture. You don't want to have to do this and struggle or feel, oh dear, how am I going to do this? It's all going to go wrong. Doom. Um, things will go slightly wrong, but they're not really wrong. All they're doing, all, they're, all that happens, is that you get new opportunities to make your painting even more interesting. And um, when you make a mistake, don't worry about it. In life, everyone makes mistakes. It's how we learn. And uh, I suppose as long as um, mistakes aren't too grim, think of everything as, wow, that was an experience. Not, don't, don't think of everything as being dreadful. 
so same thing with the brush so because I put that little bit of extra white on there so I just want to soften that a little bit just do a few swipes like so yep, there we have a sky now then what's the other thing I was going to do there was something else wasn't there these trees right so I'm going to adjust the camera and zoom in and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with these trees right so here we are these these trees what am I going to do well I'm going to try to make them a little bit more interesting they're quite big trees because they're not that close to us so uh, you will see um, tree trunks and I'm going to just show you a little trick that you can do using a q-tip here's a q-tip all I'm going to do is just put the q-tip on the field below and just do a few lines coming up like so so that little bit of the q-tip there is now uh, has paint on it so I'm going to turn it and then use another clean bit and just put a line up there like so turn it again put a, another line up there use the other end let's have one there and in fact I'm going to make this one come right up the top just lightly poking up and you'll see why in a minute okay so this is basically finished with that's had it and um I'm going to put a few more in there. I'm going to have another one there. And I think possibly even one that goes off at an angle. A little bit there, just going into the sky. Just a little bit there. I'm not going to overdo this because I don't want it to be just like, you know, masses of tree trunks, because that's not what this is about. This is just about adding what looks like a bit of detail at the end of the painting. So now that I've done that, and you may think, well, okay, you've got these giant spiky things poking up here. Well, they're, they're just trees that haven't been quite finished yet. So I'm going to use, again, a very big brush, considering the size of the um, area that I'm going to paint on. Give the brush a little bit of a wipe. Get a little bit of green just on the corner of the brush here. And all I'm going to do is very carefully... I, I don't do things awfully carefully, but I'm just going to sort of extend the tree up a little bit, just put a few little bits in the sky, just there and there and there, just literally just touching it a little bit and there. Nothing much. Like so. Okay, they look a bit too... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Strange. Yes, they look strange. So let's just spread them out a little bit so that they become uh, what we call in the business less strange okay there we are so that's just giving the trees a little bit more height and it sort of helps lose this sort of rounded off look so that the tops just look a little bit um, a little bit fragmented and I think it just needs a little something in there, in the middle. So I'm not, um, I'm not being careful about this. This is just, I suppose, I'm just literally just pushing the paint on. And I'm mixing the paint too with the colour of the sky. In other words, the white. And I'm using that just to give it a slightly misty look on the top. There we are. That also gives the effect of these over here going further away. Okay, now the only thing I'm going to do before I finish is cover the trunks a little bit so that it looks as though there's foliage in front of the tree trunks as well as behind them. And there we are. Right, so this is a basic lesson. So <laughs> Depending on your age, if you're really very young, go and get your parent or parents or carer or provider or whatever you call uh, your person in charge and tell them about the video. Uh, please subscribe if you like it. I'll be doing more that are aimed at uh, the younger painter. And um, uh, I also teach on Zoom and uh, 
if you want to be on a Zoom lesson, supervised obviously, um, feel free to uh, contact me. I'm going to just do a couple of little touches there. Uh, because I, when I teach, I don't, um, it's not just for adults, it could be for younger people too, I don't really mind. As long as you behave. <laughs> and um, yeah, you never know, you might find it fun. Put a link in the box below if you want to follow up on this sort of thing. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you've learned something. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.